And I look at that child, and I just lost it. I mean, she had bite marks all over her. A tri-state child is attacked by a Rottweiler pet. Police are looking for this man as some local parents are downright frightened. And did you catch the Shula Bowl? News 5 Tonight is next. You're watching WLWT, Cincinnati's 5. This is News 5 Tonight. Parents at one tri-state school are up in arms, demanding a change in school policy for their children's safety. This dog gives one area neighborhood a scare it won't soon forget. And did you catch the Shula showdown? Only one of them can win. Which one is it? But first tonight, a horrifying day for one area family after a Rottweiler dog mauls their two-year-old girl. I'm Terry Daniels. And I'm Melissa Ross. Family members say they've been worried for some time now that a Rottweiler named Champ was eventually going to attack one of their children. Well, as we show you in our top story, today their fears came true as little Caitlin Holt lies in serious condition at an area hospital. Part of her intestines was hanging out the one side and that she had bite marks on her back and on her buttocks. And Dorenda Holt says the doctors still aren't sure her two-year-old granddaughter Caitlin is out of the woods yet. This is Champ, the Rottweiler. Police say mauled little Caitlin while she was visiting her aunt Annabelle Holt in Petersburg, Kentucky. Champ is their dog. He was apparently chained up in the yard when he went after Caitlin. Caitlin was air cared to Children's Hospital while the family gave Champ up to quarantine at the Boone County Animal Shelter. It's going to be quarantined. I think it's for a period of 10 days. And then after that, it's basically the owner's discretion as far as, you know, what they want to do with the dog, as far as if they want to bring it back home or try and find a new home for it or, or whatever options they, de you know, they decide to consider. Caitlin's grandmother says there's only one option as far as she's concerned. She claims Champ has attacked kids before and wants the Rottweiler put to sleep. I think the dog needs put down. I think the dog needs to be killed. I mean, it's bit a child once and it'll bite again. No word yet if charges will be filed against the canine's owner. Annabelle Holt says the blame lies with Caitlin's parents. She says they weren't watching the child. And if you can believe it, a loose Rottweiler causes quite a stir in a College Hill neighborhood. You can see the dog as it wanders the neighborhood on Pawnee, forcing people to stay in their cars, unable to get out. Cincinnati police had to call in the SPCA, who were able to put a noose on the Rottweiler without too much of a problem. No injuries reported, but plenty of shaken nerves. Tragedy in Blue Ash tonight as a six-year-old girl is burned in an accident. The victim was flown by air care and is now at Children's Hospital for treatment. Police still aren't sure exactly what happened. It did happen in the parking lot at the Fox Run Apartments where police were called. This is the week Raymond Tanner is expected to be transferred from a Dayton mental hospital to Cincinnati's Lewis Center. In 1990, Tanner was found not guilty by reason of insanity for cutting off his wife's head on Valentine's Day. Last week, a Butler County judge ruled that Tanner could be sent to the less restrictive Lewis Center. The director of the center says if you look at the track record, very few forensic patients ever have escaped from that institution. Is it murder or suicide? That's what family and friends of a Columbus, Ohio businessman are asking themselves tonight. Robert Gill was found in a Guernsey County field shot in the head. He'd been missing for nearly a week. Gill was 37 years old and co-owned several bars in the Columbus area. An autopsy tomorrow will determine the circumstances surrounding his death. Another Washington power broker hits the campaign trail in the tri-state this weekend. This time, Secretary of Commerce Ron Brown is on the election trail for Congressman David Mann. So I think the most important thing about, uh, about David Mann is his commitment to, to all of the people, to bringing people together, not the interests and needs and aspirations of, of some of his constituents, but rather of, of all of his constituents. 
and Brown and Mann conducted a whirlwind schedule and went to about four or five church services this morning. You betcha. Yeah, yeah. Pretty busy. Overseas now, memorial services are being held for hundreds of victims from the ferry disaster. You recall it happened in the Baltic Sea on Wednesday when the ferry Estonia went down in a storm, killing more than 900 people. More than half of the victims were Swedish. Today, bells rang and services were held. In Estonia, similar services for the several hundred Estonians who died. Meanwhile, a Finnish Coast Guard vessel is using a high-tech robot equipped with cameras to get a look at the wreckage that sank. Sonar images indicate that the bow of the ferry had been sheared off, allowing water in, although the official cause of the ferry disaster has not yet been determined. New developments tonight in Operation Uphold Democracy, and it's good news. U.S. Marines will begin pulling out of Haiti tomorrow. They're going to be replaced by military police more equipped in handling peacekeeping duties. The U.S. Deputy Secretary of Defense says the situation is finally getting under control, allowing the withdrawal of troops. Meanwhile, it was a calm day in Haiti. The day passed without much violence. U.S. troops kept the peace by patrolling the streets of Port-au-Prince, and American patrols also stepped up their search for weapons hidden by anti-democracy forces. Lawmakers in Washington will vote this week on setting an exit deadline for all U.S. peacekeepers. Right now they stand at 20,000. Back here in the States, some trembling in the New England area as a rare earthquake shakes an area near Boston this morning. Now the minor tremor measured only 3.6 on the Richter scale. No damage or injuries reported there. Meantime, Denver is pounded with a severe hailstorm. Golf ball size hail forced motorists to seek refuge under bridges. Some damage is reported here as the hail and 40 mile an hour winds ripped through the city overnight. This is day three in space for the first Kentuckian ever to make the trip above. So shuttle Endeavor pilot, the pilot Terry Wilcott is a Logan County native. Now all six astronauts on board are using high-tech radar to look at the volcano that continues to erupt in eastern Russia. They are also mapping the environmental changes all around the world. The Endeavor is on a 10-day mission. A chain of humans joined together in hundreds of cities across the country today. Here in Mobile, Alabama, 150 churches encouraged more than 7,000 members to form a human life chain. The demonstration is a peaceful way to make a stand against abortion. Life chains were formed in 800 cities in the U.S. and Canada today. And the tri-state was no exception. From northern Kentucky into Cincinnati, a line of people said to be 12 miles long. No angry words or shouting, just thousands of people carrying anti-abortion signs. It's one of the grossest form of violence, and we're talking about violence in society, and here we, uh, and we would like to prayerfully ask people to consider that this is God's gift, and you're trying to uh, influence others to think more prayerfully about this gift. A few passers-by honked horns at the Life Chain members. However, no reports of any confrontations between the opposing sides of the abortion issue. Well, most of us hope to live to be 101, but few think we'll set a world record at that age. Guess what? An Australian woman did just that. Mary Umena from Queensland's Gold Coast is 101, and she just set a new freestyle swimming record for the 50-meter race in her age group. She made the swim in 5 minutes and 12 seconds, proving that things do get better with age. It's hey, amazing. I'll second that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, coming up, your kid's school lunches just might lose some of the fat. Are you concerned with your kid's safety at school? So are these parents, and they're doing something about it. Their story coming up next. Plus, a little later, you might not consider the Bengals to be too entertaining, but the halftime visitors certainly were. Those stories and more a little later on when News 5 Tonight returns. Some parents in Green Hills are demanding changes in their school district. They argue that their children's safety is at risk. They want the district to change school policy. This after a Beechwoods Elementary School student was attacked last week. Monica Abler talked with parents who say they know how to protect another child from becoming the next victim. Parents are doing all they can, passing out composite sketches of the suspect in the attempted abduction of a Beechwoods Elementary student nearly two weeks ago. 
Now they want change within the Winton Woods City School District. We want to address the board about putting something in the policy that if something like this happens again, if children um, attack or there's a physical or sexual attack on children in the community or in the Winton Woods Park area, that a letter be sent home immediately to parents to inform them about this. Parents are outraged because they said they did not hear about the attack until a week later. I found out from a friend that somebody had told her last Wednesday, that was like a week after. From a neighbor, from a neighbor that heard it from a neighbor, you know, heard it from a neighbor. Through the grapevine, from a phone call. The Beachwood school principal is sending out letters telling parents the district will be sensitive to the safety needs of children. But until parents are sure that something is being done, they're making sure these posters of the suspect are out for everyone to see. The district says it is receptive to the parents' ideas, but in the meantime, the parents are watching the room every minute. My kindergartner doesn't really understand. My nine-year-old, he thinks I'm too overprotective, but that's what you have to do, you know, basically. It's obvious that the school is not going to protect our children. We have to. In response to that, one school member says that's part of a growing trend to expect schools to do more and more to protect children in a place once thought to be a place for learning and safety. Monica Adler, Cincinnati's News 5 Tonight. And the parents say they plan to attend a school board meeting on October 24th to ask the district to change its policy. If you're worried that your youngster isn't getting a healthy lunch at school, well, so's the Department of Agriculture. That's why it's not only cutting the fat in school lunches, it's analyzing the nutrient content of each piece of food. This pilot program is taking place at four schools across the country right now, but the goal is for schools nationwide to adopt the low-fat approach. Hold the Twinkies.